Welcome back, everyone. It's uh, your pal Chris here. And a little while back, I made a video about writing HTML documents in org mode. And I said I might go into the topic of creating a website with org mode and what's involved. So uh, let's, uh, let's go crazy and let's just take a look at how I do it. And um, this might be a bit of a rambling video because, uh, you know, I don't really have a, a script or anything for this or a pre-planned uh, content. So, you know, we're going to have some fun and figure it out. And uh, maybe you'll come along with me for the ride. All right. Now I've rearranged my desktop so you can you can see what I see. You can see behind the curtain and all the magic that's happening back here. And basically, I will demonstrate the process of how I set things up with my website. So basically, we'll see if, if this passes for a demonstration or just, uh, you know, if, if more explaining will be necessary. But I open up, uh, do a find file here, go to my website directory, which is in the home directory, nothing too sophisticated there. So you see, I've got git here. Um, this, this directory is git version control, but this might change because as I mentioned in another video, I'm not using git anymore to publish the entire site, basically publish this directory to the server and then serve the website from the HTML directory. I'm no longer doing that. I'm just publishing the website from the org mode files to the HTML directory and then using rsync to copy the resulting HTML files up to the server. Uh, so all I really need to version control would be the org directory, the includes, which I haven't really used yet, but I was playing around with um, like having a uh, some different macros or like a, a sidebar that I wanted to include on every page. You can use includes for your header and footer as well, uh, because basically the the options for having a custom like header area or a, a, your custom HTML preamble is basically just a string. So you can write any function to generate a string and uh, use that function as the the HTML preamble and postamble for your page. Uh, as far as I know, I've never done that. Uh, I played around with it, but I haven't. Uh, I haven't done that personally. This is just. I've added some custom CSS to the existing uh, org mode output. Uh, so basically, I will go into the org directory here. Maybe I can make this a little smaller. And so any document that ends in .org is turned into an HTML file and moved over to the HTML directory, and then ends up. On the website but anything that ends with a dot draft extension is basically just that it's, it's just a draft like it's something that i'm still working on and i don't want to publish yet because it's it's uh, it's not ready so that's a way that i can start working on things and uh, writing web pages that don't end up in the you know in the final product basically they don't get converted to html so uh, the, the benefit of this is that I can I can open up a document here like I was going to start writing about um, org mode to do lists. So I can start writing this and you'll notice even though it doesn't have a dot org extension, it still has org mode enabled automatically. And that's because I basically used uh, in my in my Emacs configuration, I just have it take dot draft files or files that end with a dot draft extension and to en enable org mode automatically. Uh, so back to the org directory here. So, you know, you've got a few different things going on here. Um, I also have a directory for uh, different fonts that I've used on my website, either currently or in the past. Uh, and those come over in the export as well. And so do any, any images as well. So uh, basically, these directories are just copied over as is over to the HTML directory. It's only the org files that are converted. So basically there's static files and org files that will be converted to HTML. And uh, so once I've done that, basically all it is is, uh, so from, from any org mode document, I can do control C, control E. And then uh, if we scroll down in the org dispatcher, you'll see it toward the bottom here. There's this option to publish. And um, so you can have multiple published projects. Uh, one of these would be my website. I just do capital P and then, you know, A for all projects. So now it's just built the website in the HTML directory. 
So, but how did org mode know which directory to look at in order to do this conversion? Uh, so basically, um, if we go to the, 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 the main website directory, again, I have this website.el file, which gives org mode the instructions. So first, there's an RSS exporter, which I guess is no longer uh, supported by default in org mode. So I just added it here because um, I, I have a, for this, for the main index page here, the home page, uh, what it basically does is it exports this to an RSS uh, feed, basically an XML file that people can use as an RSS feed. Uh, you'll find that on uh, you know, chrismyron.com uh, slash index.xml. So this is a this is a, a usable RSS feed that you can use, and that comes from this uh, OX RSS function. And then the next thing to require is the OX publish. Um, and basically, that will allow us to take these directives here. I'm not sure why this is commented out. Oh, I guess that's from when I was experimenting with with having a blog. So I guess that's that's no longer necessary. So basically, I have a few things in here, and uh, you know, don't don't use this as a great example of of how to do this, uh, because for some reason here. There is a way to have all static files copy across. I don't know why I have a separate one here. Like, see, there's some image extensions here that I want the static, uh, the org static uh, list to copy these along. And then I have one for images and one for fonts. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure why I have separate ones like that. Uh, it was probably from troubleshooting something. But uh, as I said, this is not a not a great example. Um, it's just uh, demonstrating how it works. So basically, the first list here is org files. So basically, you have this uh, this key here, or I guess these are key value pairs, I assume. Uh, this must be, I guess this is like an associated array. Pardon me, I, I, I am not great on my programming terminology. But basically, you know, for base directory, it looks at my website directory and then at the org files. And for the base extension, it's .org. So of course, that will ignore the .draft files I showed you earlier. Then the publishing directory would be where the files go when they're converted, and that's to slash website slash HTML. And these, of course, are in the home directory. So you know, all is relative, as they say. Uh, recursive true, I guess that means go through all the base directories as well, or subdirectories as well. I don't have anything in subdirectories, but if I did, it would publish those along too. And uh, the function that I want to use is org HTML publish to HTML, of course, because we're converting these to HTML. Uh, and you can you can put all sorts of things in here to to customize this. I don't have much happening here. I have. Um, a little bit added to the HTML head, which is just a link to my style sheet, my, my CSS, and then uh, HTML post amble. As I said, this will take uh, as an argument any string. So if you could write a function that produces uh, a string as output, you can even put that in here instead of this string. You can just put the function, and so that way you can have a, a fully customized HTML preamble and post post amble. So basically, I've only got a custom post amble, which is down here. You see, I have it reproduce a link to the home page and to a contact page, which I think is dead right now. Yeah, I don't have anything on the contact page, so you can't find me. And then, of course, these ones are for the static files. So this directive here, or rather this list, uh, looks in the website slash org directory where where the org files are as the base directory. And as an extension, it says look for, you know, .css, .htaccess, .png, .jpg, .gif. These are different files that it says just basically copy those as is to the HTML directory, make it recursive. And the publishing function in this case is just org publish attachment. So I guess it basically just copies those along without doing anything special to them. And I basically have that repeated here and here for the images and the font. But um, you can put all these static files into one list. Uh, I'm not sure why I have it separate again. And uh, this is now the, the final list is the RSS feed, which it says, so look into the org directory is the base directory. Uh, copy the file or publish, uh, publish the file to RSS using the org RSS publish to RSS function, which we included at the top. 
and it has some options here that you need an HTML uh, link home and uh, use uh, absolute URL. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I think this is just some boilerplate stuff that I copied from the, the website for this uh, RSS function. And so the to exclude, this is interesting. So you can tell it to you basically tell Orgma to exclude all files except for the index.org file. So basically, it's going to take index.org, which um, here is the, the front page of the site, and publish it to the XML file. You see here, XML is the RSS extension that I have uh, desired for this list to use. And then down here, uh, this is where you set up the actual publishing project. So when you when you export from org mode and you hit publish, uh, which projects? So you can actually have multiple publishing projects. This is just for my website, but you see this is a, this is an A list here. You can have as many as you want here, and then um, so basically you can just put in what a certain project consists of. So for my uh, quote website, that's the name of the project. These are the components: the org files, org static, RSS, images, and font. Of course, uh, so I could probably I could probably um, make this much more organized and uh, condense it down to something more effective, uh, which uh, maybe I will sometime. But it, you know, it works for now. And uh, basically, when that's done, I have a function that just publishes this to my website using rsync, and I put that into a bash script. So, you know, in theory, all I have to do is open a terminal, type uh, publish uh, website, which is the name of the the bash script. And it uses rsync to take the contents of the HTML directory and copy them up to the server. And that's about it. That is the that is a long uh, rambling presentation on how I generate this uh, this fun little website that you see here using org mode org mode as your publishing vehicle. So there you go. I could do a um, I think I will do a proper step by step video actually like showing how to do this from scratch, like setting up a basic website, maybe even setting up your hosting as well. Uh, so like setting up your your server, your VPS, and your, your SSH keys and all that uh, so that you can do the rsync and the whole process. And that'll be, I think that'll be a fun video. So maybe we'll get around to that next time. But uh, if this was uh, inspiring and it, it, it got you going and you want to try this yourself, uh, there's lots of great, um, lots of great, resources online that you can look at and uh, stay tuned for that video if you want to follow along and we can have some fun with it uh, but of course uh, if you like the video you can like it and um, you know share with someone who you think could benefit from an org mode website and uh, subscribe if you want to see more uh, but i'll leave it there thank you all for watching and uh, i think i will see you all next time be sure to leave me any comments or questions you have below and uh, we'll talk again sometime soon